Hey guys, uh, good evening. This is Mandeep, and it's uh, Monday, uh, April the 1st. Over the weekend, I did a video where um, I showed you how you can use um, some simple tools that are available inside of Thinkorswim, like the probability of cone or you know, fib replacement, and most of these are standard tools available on other platforms as well. And uh, we use these tools to identify how would um, you know retailers like us choose options and uh, strike prices. Right, so we went through a couple of examples, and hopefully that uh, helped. I got some uh, you know emails pertaining to that, and I appreciate the uh, the input. So what we will do today is uh, do something different. Right, we want to look at how do um, how are the institutions playing these options you know I, we call them the wise guys and the reason we call them wise guys is because you know they most likely know something that we don't know and that's why you know they uh, lay out some heavy wood in terms of you know buying options that are uh, you know substantial risks in, in millions of dollars right um, so while we may think that you know a million dollars is uh, you know maybe pocket change for these guys but that's not exactly true when they're buying these options and when they're laying out a huge capital, uh, it's very likely that they have some information that's not available to us. And, you know, what we want to do is try and follow these wise guys um, as and when we can. Of course, we have to make our own um, objective decision and uh, figure out whether uh, what their bias is. So let's look at two examples and hopefully that will help you understand and then um, you guys can do this analysis by yourselves in, in the future. So we'll use the same tool that we used yesterday, which is, you know, we start with the scanner. And this is a standard scan that's available, which gives you the top 10 sizzling stocks, right? So when you run the stock, uh, it comes up with a, a list of stocks. And I essentially look for stocks that have, you know, high liquidity, which means they have, they're trading at least like um, in a million uh, in volume on an average uh, each day. So although we could uh, look at um, any any example, but uh, one thing that caught my eye was uh, this uh, stock called AXSM, which is a pharmaceutical stock. And I believe they're working on a drug uh, in the multiple sclerosis uh, space, right? Well, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, this is a stock that uh, um, I currently own, and I own stocks mainly because of uh, technicals and less because of fundamentals. But this caught my eye. So I said, uh, well, let me take a look. So we go back into the trade. And we, the first thing we do is uh, take a look at um, the option stats, and you can clearly see that the call sizzle index was 3, uh, 3.0, which means it traded three, three times the average five-day volume when it came to options. So there's clearly some interest when it came to buying some call. So then we drill down and take a look at the option time and scale. And what caught my eye was, you know, the, a lot of 5,000 that was uh, for, the, for July 25th. So next, what I did was uh, I went into um, the option chain, and we will look at July 25th. And you know, it's pretty obvious there was no interest in any of these other strike prices. And the only thing that they bought was um, you know a 5,000 lot of uh, the July 15 calls, and uh, there was another trade of 5,000 calls of uh, the July 25 calls. So most likely, what they're doing here is a spread. So they're buying the July. Uh, 15 calls and they're selling the July uh, 25 calls. So let's analyze this trade, right? So this is some heavy wood here that they've laid, right? So let's look at buying a vertical here and we'll follow exactly what these guys are doing. So let's assume that we'll also do the same thing, which is we'll buy 5,000, which is the equivalent of half a million stocks. So they bought 5,000 of um, the July uh, 15 calls and they sold the uh, 25 calls, so they just set this to 25, and uh, the, the the debit was two dollars and ten cents. So let's assume two dollars for uh, you know mathematical purposes. So it's half a million times two. So they spent one million dollars on it. So the maximum risk in this trade is uh, one million dollars, and the maximum profit, as we discussed yesterday in the other video is you take the difference between the two strike prices, which is, uh, you know, 10 minus, uh, let's do the approximation, which is two. So eight bucks is their max profit, eight bucks times half a million, which is four million in profit. So this is by, you know, any stretch of imagination. This is something that, uh, you know, wasn't just placed randomly, but, you know, with a fair bit of thought. 
So let's take a look at uh, you know the analysis of the trade. So if we do the analyze trade, uh, it takes us to the screen. And what we see here is that if the stock closes below whatever, right, 17 or so, uh, then they end up losing, you can see here, uh, you know, about a, a million dollars in this trade. But if it closes above this price, the cutoff price is 17.24 and their max price is, you know, over 25, they get locked in, right, into a profit range. So here they're making, you know, 10 million. And once they get into the maximum range, they're making, um, you know, roughly $4 million on this trade, right? So this is a very easy uh, way, you know, without uh, paying for any expensive service to try and identify what the pros are doing. So now let's take a quick look at the chart on this one. And as you can see on this chart, uh, you know, uh, we, we have a buy signal based on the ultimate trading strategy. And this is a trade that I'm only in. And that's the reason it uh, sort of piqued my interest, right? So let's just uh, take a look at, uh, is there a particular reason why they why they actually ended up choosing sort of this strike price, right? So if you look at it, uh, and what we'll do is we'll uh, look at what the uh, minimum was on this, and it's, so the low on this was a uh, dollar ninety four, and the high was sixteen point uh, eight. So let's take a look at the the Fibonacci and retracement instead. We'll look at the extension on this. So we'll take a look at the extension and here's where, how we would draw this. And this is extending going into the future, right? So it's, you know, um, projecting what the price would be in the future. So we can see the 23.86% is 20 and this is about, you know, 26. And this is your option expiration date, right? Which is the July, they're trading the July 15, uh, they bought the July 15 and sold the 25. So that kind of makes sense why they chose the 25 strike price. So this gives you a little bit of an idea on how these people approach. Um, and I'm not suggesting uh, in any way to go buy the stock. You guys, uh, you know, do your own due diligence analysis, talk to your stockbroker, etc. But I just wanted to show you um, sometimes it's fairly obvious and, and, and simple uh, to be able to identify what the pros are doing and in case, you know, one wants to follow them. So let's take a look at another example. Let's go back into the scan again. Um, and the next stock I want to look at is PPL, which is a, a utility company. And let's do the same analysis. So let's just go back into the trade and uh, let's type in PPL here. And the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll go back and see, um, again, uh, in the option time and sales, what was the biggest volume that got traded? So as you scan through this quickly eyeball, you can see there was a lot of 5,000 which is also the equivalent of, uh, you know, half a million uh, in actual stocks, right? And this was a put that was bought for April um, 19th for 31 strike price, right? So let's go back into uh, the, the option chain and let's take a look at what happened here. So you can see that this was a net net new position, right? If this thing was like over 5,000, then we could be a little bit uncertain and say they could have possibly closed these positions. But since the volume exceeds what the open interest is, this is a net new position that they have opened, right? And um, uh, let's take a look at the chart here in this case as well. And so one of the other things that you can see is there's no real volume on any of the other strike prices. So clearly they were hitting uh, this particular strike price, which is the 31st put. Now let's take a look at the chart here and uh, we can glean anything out from the chart. So the first thing we notice is that uh, clearly there was a buy signal, but that buy signal was closed. And since then, the stock has actually been in a little bit of a, uh, a downward spiral. And we'll go down to a smaller time frame and see what does the ultimate trading strategy, uh, you know, pick in terms of the stock being long or, or short. Hopefully, it's uh, loads. And uh, you can see that the ultimate trading strategy signal that we have actually um, went short on this stock a couple of days earlier, right? It was already short on Thursday, and these guys were trading options today. So you can see you already have a profit at 50 cents. It is a short, and you know the short was triggered here at about 32.24, and it's still sort of in a downward spiral. The other thing you can notice is that uh, it's trading below the Ichimoku cloud on 
uh, two time frames, which is the 30 minute as well as the uh, hour. And then um, it is inside the cloud on um, uh, the four hour time frame and on the daily, it's still above the cloud. And here is the uh, moving average uh, where you're comparing nine to 21 and then all of the time frames, 30, 60, four hour day, the nine period moving average is actually below the 21 day moving average. This is MACD, right? So as you can see, this MACD has actually dropped below uh, the zero line. So this is sort of your prime day trend, even though this is like, you know, moving up, this is not really um, above the zero line. So, I, you know, this is considered to be still negative. And once this starts to roll over, you will see likely um, this stock uh, could have further downside potential. So again, no recommendations here of what, uh, you know, um, you know, you should do with the stock, buy, sell, um, you know, or hold. This is just for educational purposes. And I just wanted to illustrate what you could do using the Thinkorswim platform um, in terms of following the wise guys. Have a wonderful evening.